Hey guys, Luna here. Today we have a huge new update for the game to go over as the public test server returns for round two and it's bringing loads of changes, including changes to weapon damage, new attachments, weapons, and vehicles. Plus there is a lot more to go over. So this video is gonna be one of my longest ever for PUBG and that's because the update was more in line with the size of the Fortnite update rather than what we usually see on PUBG. But I'm happy to see a lot of changes for once. If today's video is helpful, take a second to like and share or dislike. Either way, the feedback is super useful. To be honest guys, I was not expecting anything like this from PUBG Corp. They have been keeping this a pretty big secret. All I was expecting this week was a hotfix, not a bunch of new content and changes. The test server is already available to download right now and all of the changes we will see are needing to be tested further. So you guys can make sure to report any bugs and issues that you come across and the bug bounty contest will also be returning this time around. Only some features are available in the test server and the North American servers only will be playable, so keep that in mind. All right, I think we will start with the biggest change, which is to weapon damages. Pistols, they have had increased damage to the P92, the P19, the P18, the R18, and the R45. All five have had their damages buffed, and this is a change we have seen implemented already on PC. Now it's coming to Xbox. The P18C has had a damage increase of three, all the others have had five, so it is a significant boost to all pistols, making the start game especially more dangerous, and also making pistols more worthwhile using the rest of the time. Shotguns have had increased overall damage and effective range. Shotgun chokes and duck bills, which is a new attachment, I will go over that, are now less effective at decreasing spread, so the effective spread for all shotguns with a choke or duck bill will be similar to before. Increased limb shot modifier, shooting limbs now does more damage. Slightly decrease the damage of the S6 and the S18, and shotgun chokes can now be attached to the sort of shotguns as well. SMGs, adjusted the SMGs to be more effective in short range combat. To do this, they've increased the limb shot modifier, slightly increased the damage of the micro Uzi, the UMP9 and Vector, all of which have had a plus one to their damage. This could be significant for bringing the SMGs, especially closer in line with assault rifles, which have been nerfed in this update, and I will go over that though, but now I would expect to see SMGs play a bigger role in the end game. Decreased vertical recoil in all SMGs, decreased recoil and scope sway when moving in ads or aiming down sights, that should make shooting targets at range easier, although how effective that is, we would need to test out. Increased ads transition speed so you can aim at targets quicker, definitely better for close range combat. And to make the vector a little easier to find, they've increased its spawn rate at the expense of the spawn rate of the UMP9. Overall, SMG spawn rates remain the same, just those two have switched in their availability. So I agree with that, the vector is fun to use and the UMP9 is far too common. All right guys, one of the big changes, assault rifles have been rebalanced so that objectively, none of them are the best assault rifle. The power differential between each is now reduced, but each brings advantages to different situations. So slightly decreased the damage of the M16, the SCAR, the AUG, and the M416, reducing all their damages by one. So for example, now the UMP9 SMG has a 39 damage and the assault rifles, or most of them anyway, have a damage of 43. Instead, before it was 38 and 44. So it's gonna be a noticeable change now that these weapons do much closer damage. Increased reload time by 30% for the SCAR, M16, and M416. Increased reload time by 10% for the AKM, Increased vertical and horizontal recoil for all assault rifles except the AKM, but it's decreased recoil recovery rate for all assault rifles, which keeps things balanced. Restricted big scopes, 8 and 15 modifiers for use with all assault rifles. Modified recoil animations for all assault rifles as well. And first shot, including first shot after recoil resets for the M16, now have less recoil. Next up, we have changes to DMRs or your marksman rifles. Increased head, body and limb shot modifiers for all rifles. The big one guys, and it's hard to take, decreased damage of the SKS from 57 to 53, and that definitely hurts, but hopefully it will make other rifles more useful. Slightly increased the damage of the VSS and Mini 14, those have increased by one, so there will definitely be a much closer damage to players from the VSS Mini 14 and the SKS now. Increased vertical and horizontal recoil for all the MRs, and decreased the recoil recovery rate for all the MRs. That means bigger recoil, but you will return to the original aim position quicker. Added new recoil animations for all DMRs and increased the world spawn rate of all DMRs as well. Plus, these rifles will now equip all assault rifle attachments, magazines, and compensators, etc. 
along with the regular sniper rifle attachment, so it should be easier to mod out your rifles now in the game. Sniper rifles and guys decrease the basic damage of the M24 from 88 to 79, but the M24 will no longer be dropped in care packages, it spawns in the world like all other guns. Hopefully it's pretty rare though because it's still really dangerous. Both SR Quick Draw Magazine and the Extended Quick Draw Magazine now spawn only in care packages though. So if you want to upgrade this gun then you will need to get to a care package. Other guns slightly increase the damage of the DP28 and the M249 and it's restricted big scopes 8 and 15 for use with LMGs. The only other change to weapons is that they've reduced crossbow reloading time from 4 seconds to 3.5. Other than this, weapon sway has been adjusted for all weapons, slightly increased side to side movement and sway is now more pronounced when holding your breath. Weapon sway when moving is now also reduced by the cheek pad attachment and cheek pads now help you recover from weapon sway more quickly after moving. So guys, those are the changes to weapons. I'm super excited to test them out and see what they're like, but we do have a lot more stuff to go over in this video. Let's check out the new attachments. Duckbill, a new attachment for shotguns S18, S12K. It decreases vertical pellet spread, but increases horizontal bullet spread. The light grip, it increases first shot and single shot recoil by about 15%. Animation kick reduction has been changed to 20% from 30% as well, and that's attachable to assault rifles, SMGs, and DMRs, but the UMP9, AUG, M4, SCAR, SKS, and Vector only. Thumb grip, it reduces vertical recoil, but increases horizontal recoil. It also increases the recoil recovery time for your weapon. That's attachable to the UMP9, AUG, M4, SCAR-L, and SKS. Half grip, it reduces vertical and horizontal recoil, and also reduces recoil recovery time. And that's attachable to the same weapons again. The three scope, guys, we've been waiting for new scopes, and we now finally have the three scope and the six scope. The three scope is obviously a three magnification scope, and it has an illuminated reticle. It's discoverable as a common roll drop item. The six scope, however, varies between three and six magnification. It is rare in the world though, probably more in line with the four scope or the eight scope, I'm not sure which one. We will just have to wait and see. Other item balances, level 3 helmets will now only spawn in care packages and one is guaranteed to be inside every care package. They've reduced the spawn rate for assault rifle extended quick draw magazines. Adrenaline syringes now spawn rarely alongside normal loot in the game world. Adjusted the casting time of adrenaline syringes as well from 8 seconds to 6 seconds. The tactical stock and cheek pad are now less effective at improving recoil recovery rate and now improves ad speed. And guys, that is all the list of changes to weapons and their attachments. But along with those balancing changes, they've introduced new weapons, a new vehicle for Miramar, and some other stuff as well. New weapons added the SLR. The SLR spawns alongside normal world loot. It's a DMR which uses 7.62 ammo and contains 10 bullets per magazine, 20 when you equip the extended mag to that. The SLR is more powerful than the SKS, but has more recoil, and so recoil control is the key to using this effectively. A new vehicle, the Murado. This is a classic muscle car, a fast four seat sedan that's limited to Miramar. It can be found around downtown area and main city streets. Think of the Murado as a complement to other unique vehicles on Miramar. The van is extremely sturdy but slow and ineffective when taking off road. The pickup is great for off road travel and the Murado is the fastest way to blaze down a highway. Next up we have changes to throwables. Improvements have been made to throwables, the frag grenades, stun grenades and Maltovs. You can see in this image some of those changes. Weight changes have been implemented for all four. Frag grenade has increased from 12 to 18. The Molotov from 18 to 16, so that's a decrease. And the smoke grenade has gone from 16 to 14 and the stun grenade 14 to 12. So all of them have had a decrease except for the frag, which is now 18 in weight. Increased frag grenade damage and effective range. Frags previously had to be within 2.6 meters of a player model to deal lethal damage. They now deal lethal damage within 3.5 meters, moderate damage from 3.5 to 8.5, and low damage from 8.5 to 10. So be careful guys not to blow yourself up with your own grenades. Stun grenades blinding effect has been improved. Now the direct effect is defined as stun grenade explosion occurring in within a 100 degree angle of the player's visual field. Indirect effect occurs when stun grenades explode outside of the direct effect range and players are within 5.5 meters of the explosion. But now the maximum effective range of stun grenades has been increased to 20 meters. 
Depending on the distance from the explosion, the direct effect can blind the player for a maximum of 5.5 seconds and a minimum of one second when you're 20 meters away. So how close you are to the actual explosion will determine your indirect effect. A new animation has been applied to the game as well. Characters blinded by a stun grenade now cover their faces with their hands. So that's pretty cool. Spectators are now also blinded when spectating someone hit with a stun grenade. Stun grenades will now briefly blind and deafen the thrower if they explode behind their back when cooked. You will now be unable to add while blinded as well. So those are all the changes to the stun grenade. The final one we have is changes to the Molotov cocktail and it has new effects and their damage has been increased. Molotovs can now deal indirect damage and burn damage as damage over time, depending on whether you're standing directly in the flames. If you're in the flames, you'll take both types of damage. Indirect damage has been increased from 10 to 12.5 damage per second. After catching fire, players will take burn damage as damage over time and 10 damage per second for a total of 4 seconds, so that's a maximum of 40 damage. You'll now be unable to add while taking burn damage as well. Flames now spread further along wooded surfaces in houses. Flames from Molotovs spread further if another Molotov is thrown on top of the flames. And a new animation has been added for character models who are suffering burn damage they'll attempt to pat out the flames using their hands. And that guys is all the changes to the throwables. We've got a couple of changes to character movement. They've slightly decreased the movement speed while holding SRs, LMGs and shotguns. Your equipped weapon affects both your sprinting speed and your running speed. They've removed the first shot delay when your character is not sprinting. Chambering a new round in certain weapons like the M24, Car 98 and S18 no longer limits you to walking speed while aiming down sights. The amount your camera shakes after being shot or aim punch now depends on the amount of damage received. So those are all the changes to character movement. Next up we have changes to boats and swimming. Boats now sink when destroyed. They've made some adjustments to the way swimming works to reduce the effectiveness of hiding underwater. They've decreased the maximum submersible time from 35 to 15 seconds. Once you've run out of air, you'll now take 10 damage per second up from 4, so now drowning is much more a reality in the game. They've increased the delay for breath recovery time from 1 second to 4 seconds. In other words, when you lift your head out of the water, it'll now take 4 seconds before you can begin to recover your breath. So that way you can't simply go up to the surface and then straight back down. Next up guys, we have a new feature and it's a really cool one. Players can now spectate their killer by clicking the watch button on their match result screen. Solo killer spectating, if you get killed by the blue zone, the red zone or from falling, you can spectate the nearest player from your death location. When the player you were spectating dies, you can continue spectating the killer of that player. If the player you were spectating gets disconnected, you can continue spectating their killer. If you want to know how this will work for duo and squads, well it works the same except you can only spectate team members once they're all dead, so you can't spectate other teams while potentially your own squad is there, so you can't help them out. Other changes on Erangel, all windows with bars have had the glass removed, plus added 26 graffiti images to buildings in Erangel and Miramar. A couple of changes to user interface and user experience. A marker has been added to the map that allows players to check the flight path of the plane. The path is visible from when players are at the waiting lobby up until the point when they fall down to their final drop destination. Added a user interface message showing when healing items can be used. You can now change the reticle style and color on the red dot, hollow sight and two scope using the scope zeroing keys. Next we have one change to sound and that is to the head related transfer function plugin which has been introduced to opponents gunshots for a more realistic gameplay. Previously this plugin is only affected sounds related to movement, explosions and empty cartridges, not opponents gunshots. So you could generally tell whether shots were being fired from your left or right side. But things were more problematic when trying to differentiate between sounds directly in front of you or behind your character. There was also no way to tell whether shots were coming from above or below. This new implementation of the HRTF plugin fixes both of these issues, so now you should be able to locate sounds from gunshots much more easily from wherever they're coming from. Well guys, we are finally on to our final one, performance changes. They've improved the character model rendering process to prevent some small frame drop issues. They've optimized character movement and animation while skydiving to improve frame rate when multiple players are nearby. They've made some improvements to the network code to reduce network latency. Character data calculated radius has been reduced to increase server and client performance. Bike animations have been optimized. Scoping has been optimized, so the frame rate should no longer decrease when scoping in forests. Assets and building loading in Miramar has been optimized. 
And finally, smoke effects have been optimized as well. But guys, that is pretty much it for today's PUBG video. So many new changes to test out on the public test server, which is available now. Of course, I wanna hear your thoughts in the comments on all the new content and changes. I will most likely be making some other videos this week to go over all of these new changes and see their effect in play because I definitely think some of this stuff in this update needs to be looked at in a little bit more detail. If you want to see similar videos, the links on the screen will help you get there. You can also subscribe to our community here to see more PUBG and Battle Royale content. If you made it this far into the video, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time with another PUBG video. Peace out.